Hey, the name is Bob Dean. I want to tell you about my uh, wonderful experience with the uh, L.A. School of Comedy. Uh, soon at Quinquist and Dr. James Harris, uh, I've always, I've always wanted to get, in, get up on stage, give it a shot. Anybody that's ever had that uh, longing, you need to check out Sunda and James at the L.A. School of Comedy. The uh, personal attention, they help you to cultivate your thoughts into a, into a friggin' awesome uh, comic routine straight up onto the stage. I don't know what else to tell you. They're great. They're the best in Los Angeles. I've studied with some other guys in LA, some fine accredited comics, but it's all like book work. You know, they want you to you know, die of this and that type of thing. This place is just one place to go. You want to get your butt straight up on stage right away and make yourself happy. It's the best high you'll ever have. <laughs>57 years old a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and you know what that makes me? It makes me a man of privilege. According to the media, I'm a white man of privilege. Okay? What am I supposed to do to show uh, the world that, that, I, that I'm just a nice guy? Fact, I am a 13-year volunteer at the Rail Institute in Hollywood, California, Read of the Blind. Second fact. I've been fostering animals at my apartment for over 11 years. I have five cats in a one-bedroom apartment right now, three of whom are black. Right <laughs> here, privilege. You know, no, you know, everybody has a tough time growing up. Nobody out there has any idea how hard I had it growing up. Nobody. <laughs> I had to drive a three-year-old Buick a quarter of a mile to my high school, and sometimes there was nowhere to park. <laughs> when everybody else went to Barbados on the senior class trip, I had to go to Fort Lauderdale, because we couldn't afford it. <laughs> Our swimming pool didn't have a diving board. You have no idea how hard I had it growing up, lady. <laughs> oh, man. You know what, I've been a bartender for 36 years. Woo! Give it all up. Anybody else out there been a bartender, waiter, waitress? You all tip well for your waiters, waitresses, and everything like that because we work hard. <laughs> you know, that does anything but make me a cracker racist, though. I mean, I've done every, I worked in every kind of bar from, or restaurant, from five star to where they'll kill you over pool cue. <laughs> you know what? In this town, I'm the minority. Okay? I'm white, I'm Christian, I smoke cigarettes inside my home, I eat red meat, I'm gay. I don't have a fake handicap placard in my car, or a fake fucking service dog in my purse. Shame on you, fake service dog people. Shame on you. I live in Los Angeles, I'm the minority. <laughs> I let the cat out of the bag, I'm gay. <laughs> Confirmed bachelor, we used to call it. I come from this huge, huge football family, huge football family. My dad was captain of his high school team, my mother was junior for the rival team, they hated each other at that point. You know, I played a little, my brother, my, my buddy, everybody, this is America, we love football, right? So I choose Christmas Eve after a cocktail party to come out to my parents. And I said, mother, I have something to tell you. I said, I'm gay. And she was shocked, of course. She was a Serb. And, you know. Anyway, she put her hands on my shoulders and she looked right behind me and she said, you're my son and I will love you forever. And I said, thank you, mother. And I have something else to tell you. She said, what is it, honey? And I said, I hate football. <laughs> her fingernails went into my shoulders like this, and she looked at me, she looked at my father, she looked at me, she looked at my father, she said, did you hear what your son just said? <laughs> Robert, you hate football, that's exactly what you're going to burn in hell. What am I going to tell the neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bear. <laughs> A bear is a big fat guy with body hair. 
Show us your back. What? Show us your back. You want to? Ooh, somebody else has been to one of my shows. You want to see my back? You want to see what a real bear looks like? Cover your eyes. Last year, it needs me to crop circle on my back. <laughs> when I'm in an intimate situation, my partner's favorite pillow talk is. <laughs> <laughs> Manscaping my ass. You dudes that hold your wiener and shave your balls, please, you call me a queer. <laughs> I had a boyfriend about 20 years ago that talked talk me into spraying nair on my balls, and I'm rather well in now. So I stood there for an hour holding my wiener while this acid ate the hair on my privates. Let me tell you something, it works. But I didn't feel sexy at all, I felt ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm the kind of queer that hates fags though. <laughs> I like muscle cars when I drink a lot of beer. I'm a bear. <laughs> I've been a bartender, as I said, for 36 years. Yay, love it, love it, love it. Many of my regulars are here tonight, sorry for the shot. I hope you'll still come back and tip heavily. <laughs> People in bars, let me tell you something. 95% of my customers are great. As I said, I've worked all over this great country of ours, from dives to five star. But this is how it works. People come through the door. It's hot in here, it's cold in here. The valley scratch my car. <laughs> Do you have big ice cubes? Do you have black napkins? Do you have Tito's vodka? Do you have Casamigos tequila? We're friends with the owner. We wanted a booth. He said dressing on the side. And my favorite now is, I was overserved. Well, screw you. If you can't handle your alcohol, don't blame me. My motto is, if you have an airbag, have another. <laughs> Soon, I got nothing but a couple of cats. <laughs> Guys and boys are easy. Guys are great. Shot in a beer, martini, gin and tonic. Ladies, I love you, but here's how it goes. When you pick up that handcrafted cocktail menu, <laughs> my left eye starts to twitch. I look at my watch because I know I have five people waiting behind you. And you look at all those wonderful drinks that have shaved ginger, mint, and cucumber. You order some of that garbage and I muddle it all up and you take one tip and go, this is what I thought it was going to be. I'm like, of course not, because it's nauseating. <laughs> I love jobs. Sorry, I didn't mean to be picking on the women. It's, listen, women in bars, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to hurt some people, but this is fact. White women in bars. We'd like to taste every one of your 26 wines by the glass because we've recently been to Napa. <laughs> And we want something that's earthy, plummy, jammy, and cheap. <laughs> Black women in bars. I want a strawberry pina colada. I want extra strawberries in that pina colada. I am not going to pay for those extra strawberries. And I can't taste no alcohol in this. <laughs> Persian women are the worst. These are jump through me do like this. You're the head of my conductor do like this. <laughs> True story, these two Persian women a couple of years ago. I'm walking through the dining room with all these plates in my arms, and they're about my age and dripping in gold. Like like every time I put a gallon of gas in my Buick, their bank account goes ching ching. And this one woman with a dismissing hand, she goes, Look at you. A man of your age doing this for a living, you should be ashamed. And they stood this two women started laughing. And the whole room got really silent and I just stopped and I said, I could do this for a living because I don't know someone like you and I'm sucking the life out of me. <laughs> Robert, please report to HR. <laughs> I'm a smoker and I make no apologies for it. Let me tell you something right now. Those commercials on TV, speak up about secondhand smoke California, gonna say something. I keep auditioning for the part of the guy that's like <sighs> and blows the smoke upstairs into the baby's room. <laughs> And now, yay, Pot's legal, yay! Spare me. I mean, everything stinks like reefer now. You're taking all the fun out of scoring a, you know, 40 ounce, well, whatever, that was a long time in 1970. 
you know, I walk in the, the store the other day, they've got these little pens, you're like, and all of a sudden you're like, anyway, the thrill is gone. But it, everything just thinks like smoke, but it reminds me of a great smoking story, though, being gay. 95% of, 99% of my buddies are straight, 100% all-American dudes. But when we go out drinking, shoot, pool, they have questions. You know, we're outside smoking, and my one buddy says to me a couple of weeks ago, he goes, hey, uh, can I ask you something? And as soon as they do that, I'm like, oh, fuck, here it comes. And I'm like, yes. And he goes, well, like, are you a pitcher or a catcher? And I'm like, you know, honest to God, it just depends on how much scotch I've had. And then he's like, oh, okay. A couple minutes go by. And he goes, oh, uh, can I ask you one more thing? And I'm like, what? And he's like, does the uh, pitcher generally pay for dinner? And I'm like, yeah, it's customary. And I said, let me ask you something, pal. How come you only eat pussy, but you won't eat clams? He said, clams don't moan. Come on, that was good. That's my time, thank you, please. The Bob B Show on iTunes, BobBeSurlyComic.com. I love you all, thank you all.